wanted to start actually with, with one of the points that Charles brought up, which is about when we look at the role of middle management in delivering diversity, I think it's really important that we think about the role of middle management per se in our organizations, about where they are and about how they are sometimes perceived. Because the truth is that middle managers are very often somewhat overlooked, somewhat denigrated. They can be seen as the permafrost. Uh, I've heard one FTSE 100 chief executive refer to them as the flabby middle. It's the bit that kind of rolls over the top of your trousers. Very often in need of a bit of trimming uh, and um, toning up. Uh, and that, I think, is at a time when, in the wake of the credit crunch over the last several years, we saw a lot of organizations looking at the middle management as a source of cost savings, as a focus for cultural change programs. Uh, it's not necessarily been a very rewarding place to be in many ways. And so in 2016, we um, did a piece of research with a corporate comms company, Top Banana, looking at, we surveyed 1,400 managers. Um, and we looked in, in particular at that relationship between senior middle managers and their senior leaders. What do they see about the top brass? What do they perceive of senior leadership? And the thing that we put our finger on was a breakdown in trust uh, for in too many organizations, quite frankly. Only around one in three middle managers say that they fully trust their senior leaders. On the half, think that senior leaders make communication with them a priority, and yet they're being expected to play a pivotal role in communicating business strategy, key decisions, uh, and forming the culture in those day-to-day -day interactions that shape what a company culture really is. Uh, and so as a result, um, somewhat astonishingly, only around a third said that they felt confident as middle managers, as leaders of their own teams, in communicating organization decisions. So we asked, well, what do you want to see from your senior leaders? And these were the top five um, behaviors that middle managers are asking for, which I think are actually, while, while this was very much general about communication, trust, and engagement, I think it's the right starting point in many ways for today's conversation about diversity. Middle managers want to understand what senior leaders are thinking. They want to know what the priorities are. And that, I think, is so important when it comes to issues of diversity and inclusion. Because middle managers are under pressure to deliver. They've got everything to do. Making sure that diversity and inclusion is part of how they work doesn't get squeezed out as something that, well, would be nice to do. Or we're, we're pretty good at that. We don't really need to spend much time working on it. I think it's really important. So there's a prioritization question there. Uh, the second one is about admitting to mistakes. Um, you know, heaven forfend that senior leaders might once in a while make a mistake, but uh, for middle managers, it would go a long way to, hear, to see hands put up when that happens. Um, there's some other broad issues here about encouraging people to raise issues. Again, something that can take an organization, organization into some very uncomfortable places when we're talking about diversity and inclusion. But I think we have to get there in terms of having the conversation about how an organization works and what the impact of some of those behaviors can be. Middle managers want to be inspired about the vision. Um, uh, and they want to see senior leaders upholding the company values. And I, I love hearing, talking about the standard chartered purpose and how that permeates through, which I think is so important, having that sense of the bigger ideals that an organization stands for. So that, I think, I would set the, the context for. And I'm going to rattle through a few further findings from, from our Delivering Diversity report, which gets more specifically into the question of race and ethnicity. And I may touch on some of the work that we've done at CMI as part of our CMI Women Initiative um, of late as well. Uh, but this was a report we published last summer. Um, the output of around 18 months' work um, with some superb leaders, a great um, cross-institutional academic research team, a research advisory board chaired by Pavita Cooper, who was formerly Global Director of Talent at Barclays and at Lloyd's. Um, and we wanted to get under the skin of where organizations are when it comes to um, delivering diversity uh, across the piece. We focused in on the FTSE 100 in this piece, um, but spoke to a few leading businesses who were engaged in it, talking about what they're doing, some of the examples, some of the case studies that we pulled through. And it was a very multi-strand piece of work. So we had a, a team looking at the public face 
for 100 companies as shown through their company websites. Um, we had an engagement program talking to a lot of uh, leaders from different companies, not just those on screen. Um, we went out to survey the FTSE 100. We got around a quarter. We were reasonably pleased with that. What we found that there was a huge amount of interest in this topic, and I think that's reflected in this series of breakfasts and the attendance this morning, but there was also a great deal of nervousness at the moment about talking in too much detail and going on record about where an organization was. So that was something we, we did struggle with slightly. And we then went out and carried out interviews of paired BAME and non-BAME leaders in different organizations so we could get into the lived experience of what it was like working in these businesses uh, and do a little bit of a compare and contrast for what it might be like for BAME leaders and non-BAME leaders in those organizations. So there's a real richness of content in the report. I'm really only going to scratch the surface over the next five minutes or so. Um, but uh, there are a number of case studies in there as well, some great companies doing some fantastic stuff. And I'll, I'll touch on just a couple of those. So, as I say, it was a, a partnership piece of work with some fantastic institutions. Uh, and great credit as well to Nick Beach at the University of Dundee, the chair of the British Academy of Management, who led that team uh, with us. Um, so, some of the key insights. As far as the public face work goes, how organizations are talking about and showing their um, perspectives on diversity. We found 15% fall into a bracket that we categorized as leading in terms of good practice. That they had a clear sense on through their public face, through the documents that are out there about the um, importance, the strategic importance of diversity and inclusion to their business. Some of those who are in the progressing category might have a great page, a great section about the gender pay gap and about what they're doing on gender, but were silent when it came to the issue of race and ethnicity. 50% um, really had very little to say on diversity and inclusion at all. Uh, and when your website is your shop front to potential employees, to current employees, when they look at the imagery that you're using, how you talk about diversity and inclusion, we think there's a huge scope for progression in that space. We heard time and again from leaders talking about the lack of representation, something that they saw as being visible from middle management upwards. Uh, and I think this quote summarized some of that, the sense that there wasn't necessarily a real effort to <coughs> acknowledge it. In contrast, the diversity leaders we spoke to felt that they were doing pretty well on gender um, at the moment. Around 84% say that they're doing either very well or fairly well when it comes to gender diversity and inclusion. We've seen such progress, so much further to go but so much progress in the last couple of last few years on that. We have strategies published. We have better data. We have public reporting. We have accountability. None of those things in many organizations are present yet when it comes to BAME diversity. And I think if we want to see a response from middle management, those are the ingredients that we need to get in place. And so these were the challenges that, that we found in the research. Um, it becomes a little bit circular and self-fulfilling. The lack of diverse role models coming out as the top uh, barrier that diversity leaders perceive. Well, that's a, that's a symptom of the lack of progress. So it's, it's circular. Um, interesting that some leaders did feel that the gender diversity debate has, had a, uh, has been a higher priority. Clearly, there's an opportunity, to, I think, to learn from those lessons. I think for today's debate, I just jumped down towards the bottom. Only 8% in our survey said that resistance from middle managers was a barrier for them. And what we took from this was that, because we had had some conversations about this sort of issue, the importance of middle management as that pivotal role within the culture. So people haven't been seeing it as resistance, per se, but it might be inertia. It might be not saying that this is a priority. It might be that feeling that, well, we're, yeah, we're pretty good, we're pretty fair around here, um, but actually that then there are sort of sins of omission, things that are not being done as a result. And I think this is also important because it speaks to how you address a strategy to get middle managers to buy in. If you approach thinking that they are a source of resistance, trying to hold back from change, you may have a more confrontational approach, the one that thinks, okay, they are potential allies, partners, and champions of change. Um, and we need to make it, you know, empower them and enable them to become those champions of change, rather than expecting that they're going to be digging in. So one organization um, 
when we asked them what do they think would make the biggest impact on, um, on changing the dial here, said that they wanted to have capability training for middle and senior management on changing behaviour, supporting careers. And that's one of the critical roles, I think, for middle managers. First of all, we want them to break the silence. This was a, a, a quote we heard from one of the respondents to the research um, that we adopted, breaking the silence, making it OK to talk about race, ethnicity, and culture in a way that people are very, for you know, often very good reasons, but often quite cautious about doing. And then empowering middle managers to support the career development and progression of um, diverse groups of employees. One of the companies, I think, who uh, we were struck do a, a really fantastic job in, in some ways on, on this was Google. Um, so one example that they offered was to break the silence, to start those conversations, was to bring together groups of managers in uh, mentoring circles. Um, so this program called Activate, senior colleagues with six to seven BAME colleagues, layering in peer-to-peer -peer mentoring as well within that, and a middle-level layer. This was really critical for them, because what they found was that having senior leaders fronting uh, diversity initiatives was great for setting the tone at the top and showing that the organization was committed. But it's very difficult for more junior colleagues to relate to people at that level. Actually having people who are the next level up in the middle was a much more accessible conversation. It was a much more real conversation. And so having next level sponsors, next level role models was a really powerful way of starting to open the conversation. And on that first point about starting conversations and, and breaking the silence, as I put it, one of the things that they observed was that some groups, some cultural groups were less likely to self-promote, less likely to self-nominate for opportunities, just not really in the culture. But that's the culture of Google. So if you came into Google without that tendency, you were likely to sit back, think that your efforts would be noticed, and you would miss the opportunities. So one of the things that they looked to do was then to get middle managers to open that conversation, be more explicit about the culture of the company, how it works, to help BAME Googlers understand those company trends uh, and norms. And Chuck Stevens, the, um, he's at Booking.com now, but um, uh, head of diversity and inclusion for EMEA at Google at the time, um, fantastic supporter of this uh, research. And talked about kind of some transformational results in those middle management, people management relationships as a result of these initiatives. The second one um, from RBS, uh, adopting an organization-wide approach to culture change, really taking this as a culture project, uh, an organizational change project, not just something that sort of sits off in a box but actually was managed across the organization. Um, something that I'm sure many organizations here today will be doing, looking at going beyond the numbers in terms of representation, but really building inclusive cultures so you don't spend those hours feeling isolated at the desk. Uh, they've achieved some year-on-year -year increases in their uh, inclusion scores as measured through their employee engagement work. Um, again, mentoring, uh, a really powerful element of what RBS has done uh, with reciprocal mentoring from the Exco downward. Um, and looking to build data, which uh, I think is a, a well-trodden well path in terms of some of the, the approaches that organizations need. So from uh, the research, just to conclude, these were our seven key recommendations. Uh, and I'll include the, in the slides, you'll find the, um, the link to the, the full report, the executive summary, the video, everything we produced uh, on all of this, if you want to dig a little bit deeper. With the team, we developed a, um, a developmental framework for organizations, whether you're just starting, you're kind of progressing, maybe you've got a few more things you want to work on, or those who are doing particularly well, are built around these seven areas. Uh, the first was about breaking the silence. And I think if we're going to get middle managers to engage with this, having senior leaders break the silence, talk about what they're thinking about this agenda, what they need to do, where the problems are, where the shortcomings are, admitting to mistakes, and sharing their vision, uh, I think is, is going to be really important to say that this is a priority. It's not a flash in the pan. It's not this month's trend that will be gone if you just keep your head down and it'll all blow over. But we need to change the way the organization works. Uh, changing the story. Something that was incredibly powerful was for organizations to humanize the diversity and inclusion agenda. There is a slight trap, I think, when we talk about data and progression and numbers 
that we lose sense of the people that are at the heart of this, the talent. Um, another case study we spoke to, Virgin Money, shared a, a really simple blog from one Muslim woman working in the company about what it's like being in the company. It was read by two thirds of their staff and they suddenly realized that they had this incredibly powerful way of just helping employees talk to each other about their experiences. That again, I think, brings to life the importance of that day-to-day -day middle management relationship. Third point is um, building in data systems and so forth, so I'll, I'll not dwell on that today. Um, I think middle managers come back in again uh, in terms of the power of sponsorship, uh, the next up leadership, making sure that people at all levels are building change. And number six can really building inclusive cultures, making sure that diversity and inclusion is real and is tangible in the organization and adaptive. Something that we picked up through the project was the importance of cultures that respond to the people who come in. It has to be a two-way conversation, and middle managers are critically important to that. And finally, benchmarking and collaboration. Um, because I think a lot of organizations are a little bit nervous at the minute about talking about this, groups like ENEI, um, the Lord Mayor's Appeal, who can facilitate mornings like this, facilitate the sharing of good practice, bring together case study exemplars. Um, really very important, I think, for moving together to get the sort of change we need. So I hope that has um, offered a few uh, little bits of food for thought. That's the warm-up act done. I think it's on to the headliners next. Um, thank you very much for listening. If you do want to get hold of um, either of those reports, they're both available on the CMI website, uh, and I'll be very happy to connect and have a chat about anything as well. Thank you very much.